understand some of the main components of the ASR 9000 series routers. So in this the first three or four are the main components like the route switch processor cards or the route processor cards, uh, fabric controller cards and the ethernet line cards. So, so majorly the ASR 9000 series have fully distributed routers and it uses something called switch fabric. Uh, this is actually interconnecting all the slots. So let, let me just come down to this. Once I go with the basic features, first starting with route switch processor card. Now this is uh, the main control and the switch fabric Ethernet inside the ASR 9000 series routers. So we can we can in other words we can say this is like the main processing unit which is going to process or control the system and do some packet switching uh, completely. And generally the route route switch processor contains something called switch fabrics. And also it has a dual RSPs, one is acting as a active and other other one as a standby. So these are typically the cards we can say. If you if you get back to the 3D view here, now this is my 9010 device, the 3D view of this one. Now here you can see there is uh, something called route switch processor card which is 440 and I think there should be one more. And let me just click on this. And this is your route switch processor cards. Now this is just like the main uh, main CPU or the processing processing device. It's like a processor of, of this particular device. So let me just click on insert to, to just add this one. Now we see the list here. You can see this route switch processor card and you can see the other one here. Now again the specifications will vary depending upon the model what you select. Again you can always visit the Cisco website to, to see the exact features uh, or the specifications of that like the 441 supports Intel XC processor with a 4 core and the RAM capabilities and of course the different types of ports it supports and then the bandwidth support for the switch fabric. Switch fabric is the next uh, important component. We'll, we'll talk about the next. Now this is like the front panel of this card. And typically you'll find the management ports like console and auxiliary ports in the front panel of this route switch processor cards. So there will be two. One is active and the other one will be will be the standby. Now the next one is like a fabric controller card, FC cards or the switch fabrics. Uh, this is responsible for interconnecting your chassis. Just like you have a slots. These all slots are interconnected from, from the back end. And it is responsible for the traffic to be forwarded from one line card to another line card. So the traffic between the line cards is responsible because of the switch fabric and it has no processing capabilities because which means the switch fabric is completely responsible for uh, getting the packets from one line card to another but it doesn't do the actual processing. The actual processing is again done by the route switch processor or route processor. So route switch processor is just you know it has the switching capabilities as well the layer 2 features as well as the layer 3 and again you can have a redundant uh, switch fabrics where one copy of the fabric now in some model routers like in some of the low end model router i think in 9001 probably you you have this fabric interconnected uh, fabric is just like a dedicated line card it resides as a dedicated line cards connecting to the black pen or or it can be integrated in some of the routers but mostly you will you will see this as a separate dedicated line card okay sorry the this is this switch fabric line card is actually a uh, uh, resides on dedicated line card it's not a separate line card it actually resides on each and every line card and it completely resides on a dedicated line cards connecting uh, to the, connecting them on the black pen on black pen towards the route processor again so it's not exactly a separate line card here. So next thing will there are some Ethernet line cards. Now Ethernet line cards are actually the we 
can say these are the, like the ports which will do the actual forwarding where you actually connect the connect the devices or the customers again there are different models of ethernet line card supported and mostly they all support up to 10 gig even 40 gig even you'll find some 100, 100 gig ethernet ports probably uh, available in some of the platforms so you can you can check the cisco website probably if you want to see the different models and the variations and the specifications and also you need to check the compatibility of those specific ethernet line cards with respect to the specific cisco asr routers so you can get into this uh, 3d view of a cisco asr where you can see the different ethernet line cards like here you can see the 40 40 port gig ethernet line card if you just want to uh, look at the 3d view of this you can see here and of course you you can also add uh, the number of ethernet line cards you can add it completely depends upon the number of slots your actual router supports so additionally you will see some other some other models like integrated service models these are uh, special specifically uh, to support some of the advanced deployments or the advanced services like cathay grid ip v6 deployments probably these specific models are used but even though it is not really compulsory but the main components will be like the the three which i discussed just now the route switch processor card and the switch fabric which interconnects the line cards presides on the individual line cards and then the ethernet line cards which provides you the connectivity now the other other components like cable management tray just to manage the cables and then the power cooling power cooling like you have fans which varies depending upon the models again when you are uh, changing the fans you need to check the specific models from the Cisco website and the compatibility with the specific platforms.